If you are eager to supercharge your Canva and YouTube workflow, listen to what Claire had to say about keyboard shortcuts. And learning those shortcuts, it's such a simple way to save so much time. And if I had known that I could bring things forward and send things back so easily without having to like do three different clicks, it would have just saved me so much time. You're going to learn how to design a Stream Deck key. It's super simple. You're going to learn how to plan for your Stream Deck before it even arrives and even how to give your keys a color outline so that you can zone your Stream Deck. Go to social media, Instagram post, and then for what I've done, I created something that will remind me like a shape for C, and then I would type whatever it is in words. So circle so that I would know it could be something as simple as that. Just something that's going to remind you what that key is. I created this whiteboard with different options. Option A, which gives me all of my buttons in the same color. I like this idea a lot. Option B gives me some of my keys in a different color so I could separate them out quickly. Option C, which is the one that I'm actually going to try. I just think it's going to be easier for me to differentiate between the keys. I'm going to take this option and I'm actually going to copy it. Control C. Thankfully, I have all of my buttons already pre-made, but I do want to give them an outline. So we're going to make that. Social media, Instagram post, square. Just so that I've got it, I'm going to control V, those keys. This one's going to be purple. I'm going to click the white and change it to the purple. And this is the main reason why I copied this over because I wanted to make sure I got the colors that I wanted for my stream deck. I'm going to click add a page and I'm going to make that one yellow. And then I'm going to click add a page and I'm going to make that one red. And what I want to do is get these set up by making sure my keys are downloaded. Here are all my keys and I'm going to download these. I'm going to click share, download PNG. I'm going to download all of them. I've got 37 keys here. That's because I've got more than I actually need and that's okay. Once they download, which they have, I'm going to open them up and I'm going to extract all of them into a new file. I'm going to close out of that and go back. What I'm going to do is instead of going to my uploads folder, I'm going to go to projects and I'm going to create a folder called Elgato Stream Deck Continue. I'm going to click that. I'm going to open up that file right here, insert all of these things into it. In just a minute, they're going to all be uploaded into that folder and I will be right back when that's done. So on the purple one, I want a caps lock or basically what it, what this keyboard shortcut will do will allow me to go from a lowercase. It's this button. It allows me to go from lowercase to uppercase. And I'm just doing this so that it has a little um, color outline so that I can tell the different zones, position, center, middle. And I've changed my mind. I'm going to actually delete these, the shell and red one because I want all of these to be the same size. So I'm going to duplicate these just like this. And now I'm going to change these to the color. Watch when I go here, I'll be able to take this left click and drag it and it's automatically going to size right to that. So all of them are going to be the same, but I need to make sure that I have all the colors and locations of where I would like these exact buttons on my stream deck. So first we're going to do the purple. So we've got caps, cut and lock. So I'm going to take this purple one. I'm going to click control Z on my keyboard twice. I'm going to find the one that says cut. I'm going to left click and drag it and replace that. Now I'm going to go to this one, drag and replace. And I'm going to go back and make sure caps, cut and lock. 
And so I'm just going to keep doing this and then I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. I'll be right back. If you want to see super helpful tutorials on Canva, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Ding. We've finished with everything. I'm going to go to grid view so you can see. So I've got caps, cut and paste. Cut and paste are actually going to go on the same button. I'm going to click share and download. Next up, you're going to learn where to find the keyboard shortcuts within Canva so that you can either use them on your keyboard or use them to program your Stream Deck. You're also going to learn how to program your Stream Deck with hotkeys and the hotkey switch. And of course, I make mistakes during this segment and you're going to learn from me and what not to do when you're first setting up your Stream Deck. Go to the Help button and type in Keyboard Shortcuts. When we click this, it will tell you what your keyboard shortcuts are for your Stream Deck. Now we're going to open up our Stream Deck profile and I'm actually going to make it all the way big so that you can see it. This is my original Stream Deck. I need to click down on this down arrow and go to Stream Deck Extra Large. Here is my brand new fresh Stream Deck. And so I'm very excited to finally be able to program my Stream Deck. What I'm going to do is I know that all of these keys are essentially going to be keyboard shortcuts, except for maybe a couple of them. So I'm going to go over here on this side right here and underneath systems, there's one called hotkey. So I'm going to put hotkey on every single one of them. I need a hotkey switch here, a hotkey switch here, and a hotkey switch here. So this one's called a hotkey switch. And what that means is that I will be able to use that button twice. I'm going to be right back when I'm done dragging all of the hotkeys. I made a mistake. It's not a big deal. I made a mistake, so you don't have to. It's okay. I can fix the mistake. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new profile. We're going to click new profile and we're going to edit it and rename it. So I right clicked rename. We're going to call this Canva. And now we're in Canva. Default profile. I'm just going to put all of these same buttons on the Canva profile. You can paste your hotkeys there so you don't have to drag them. That makes it go faster. This needs to be a default page. I typed in switch at the top and it will say switch profile. So then I can click that right there. I'm going to have it switch to the default profile. All that work in the back end in Canva with the keys is going to really come in handy because I'm going to know exactly where I want to place my keys on the Stream Deck at this point. In this segment, you're going to learn how to use those custom keys that you made and program them into your Stream Deck. And then I'm going to program my hotkeys. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. I'm going to click on my computer. I'm going to go to downloads because that's where it is. And I'm going to extract this one because I want to be able to go in there. I'm going to go back to my Stream Deck and go to this first key. Watch this. I'm going to click the down arrow. I'm going to click set from file and then I'm going to go into this one and grab that first one, cap locks. So now I know that this one's a cap lock. Then I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to go to cut first. Right next to it, there's another button. I'm going to add that one that says paste. So it'll be like cut, paste. And then I will assign those hotkeys in a minute. And so do you see why I did it in the order that I did it so that I will know where to place it on the keyboard? Warning. Warning, it really helps to plug in your Stream Deck. <sighs> you would think I'd never done this before.
I'll be back when all of these keys are set up. And what I really love about it is that it really gives me distinctive zones here. I should have made the, the rectangles maybe a little bit smaller or I should have put them in a frame so that I could see the outline a little bit better. Now let's give them their keyboard shortcuts. And what I need to know is what exactly these keyboard shortcuts are. And I want to find the ones for Control G and Control Shift G. Control Shift G. We're going to get rid of the title and we're going to go see if it works. So I've got those two things selected. We're going to group and ungroup. That's excellent. Control right bracket. This one should be Control left bracket. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to see if that actually works. So I've got circle in front of the circle. We're going to click this and move it backwards. And then we're going to leave it there and move it forwards. It does. If only there was some way I could thank Jennifer for this amazing video. Oh, I know. I'll give a super thanks. There's so many options that you can do keyboard shortcuts to. Cut I've already done, which is a hotkey, which is Control X and Control V, because Control X will cut it, Control V will paste it. And we're going to check all of these in just a minute. I'm going to keep going and I'll be back when I finish setting up all of these hotkeys. Okay, so I've done everything except for this forward key. And I wanted to show you that with the default button, that will carry me to the default profile, which I've not set up yet, which I will probably have a bunch of different profiles set up on that one so I can toggle back and forth between different profiles. Basically, I put the forward there. If I click this plus button, it will automatically give me a plus with the second page. And here is what the previous page would look like. And I'm going to go ahead and set it from file back so that it looks just like that. So I can click back and we're going to go into Canva, into a design so that we can test all of these different shortcuts to make sure that they work. We're going to turn this one to capital letters. It worked. We're going to cut it from the design. And when I cut it from the design, what popped up was this paste button. And now I can click this paste button and paste it right back there. If I click the lock button, it will lock it once. So it's still writable. If I click it again, it will lock it all the way. And if I click it a third time, it will unlock it. If I click undo, it will relock it. If I click redo, it will re-unlock it. See, I'm on the T now. I'm going to go through each one and check each one. If I click this and then click the T, it will give me a paragraph text. This font doesn't have a bold font. So I'm going to use this one that says switch font so that I can switch the font to give it one that I can bold. So the switch font works. And I'm going to click bold and it did bold it. If I click link, it will prompt me to add a link. That is awesome. If I click screenshot, it does allow me to screenshot. And then I can paste that screenshot right in. If I click copy, I can do that. And then I can paste it on the same button. Let me show you what it does there. So I clicked copy and now I clicked paste. And you see how it automatically copies and pastes. For this one, we're going to show you that it will left align and center align. I don't write align much, so I can actually just click on this if I want to. I can click it and italicize it. So with the italicize one, it will go. If you do have trouble with it, just double click and then go. Let's see if I click, yep, same thing. So it's showing that it's underlining, but it's not actually underlining. So I just have to double tap and then underline. There's actually a strike through now that you could do. 
that was not there when I set these keys, but I don't see myself using strike through a lot. Now I can delete a page. If I click this page and then click delete, why is it? Oh, that's delete empty pages. So if I, I can delete an empty page, that's what that button's for. This key right here is style and it's another hotkey switch. And so let me show you like a real scenario. Let's say that this one was black with a border weight and that border had a red and I wanted this one to be the same thing, then I could click style and then click this one and click style and it would keep the style of the one shape to the next. Hide should get rid of this and it does. And when I click it once, it will hide it. When I click it again, it will unhide it. And I really like this for the draw app because the draw app often will get in the way. And then when I go to select something and do something else with it, then sometimes it will start drawing again. So I love the fact that you can hide the draw app. If I click select all on it, which looks like this. It will select everything on the page, which is really awesome for group. And then the next one is ungroup. Um, save isn't one that I see myself using often, but it will save. It's just an extra save function. This one should add, it does. It adds an empty page for me. I like that instead of having to click down here and adding a page, I can be up here and add an empty page. We're going to click this and then click delete on it. That one's not working. My ruler is not working. So let's go see what I've got set up for ruler. It says control R, shift R. So see, I did something wrong. So let me fix that. Shift R. We're going to get rid of this. There we go. See, that's why I always test them to make sure. There's one for replace and it's control F and I can find circle and replace it with square. Magic Assist, I don't have set up right. I mean, Canva Assistant. This is why you always, always test. There we go. And it's got magic right and everything there. Love it. And then as we discussed, the default one will carry back to default and forward will carry you to the next page. Actually, I probably would want this one here so that it's in the same place as the forward. I will probably make some adjustments later on as I start using it. If you really enjoyed the Stream Deck tutorial, then you would probably really enjoy the one that I did on this mouse right here. That's right, you can set up keyboard shortcuts with your mouse. And you can watch that right here. In the description of this video, I will put in a link a few tutorials that you might find helpful. And I'll see you next time. Bye.